Welcome to the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. So you had a plan and your plan was you wanted to fulfill your potential and then the accident happened. Um, and then let's say, was that, was that when God proverbially gave you the pen for you to then write the rest of your life? Was that? Yeah, and that's what happened. My whole life completely changed. The, uh, I had so many goals. I mean, in the hospital, I was taking goals one after another. You know, when I, my accident first happened, I remember when I woke up four days later, they didn't think I'd survive four days. And I woke up and the first thing I saw, I'll never forget it, was the clock at the foot of my bed. And on that clock was the second hand. And I was looking at that second hand, tick, 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 tick. It went around one minute. And I, I can't even begin to describe the pain I was in, the excruciating pain. It's in, you can't put in words. But I set a goal and I said, okay, Mark, let's try to hang on for one minute. Yeah. You can't imagine how long a minute can be when you're in that situation. It went around finally one minute. I said, okay, Marsh, you made it one. Now let's go for two. That's how I had to exist in the beginning. Minute at a time. One minute. So just broke it right down to one minute at a time. So I set all kinds of goals. My first goal was being able to communicate because of all the physical losses one can experience, and I guess I'm experiencing all, not being able um, to express yourself to another human being is the worst. I'll tell you a funny story. I don't tell it, it's not even in my book. It just popped in my head. But um, <laughs> my sister made up this chart. She was a special education teacher. And what she did, she broke the alphabet down into four sections. So like section one, section two, and it had a line of letters on each section. So we got using that chart, and I can talk pretty fast. And, you know, you and I are talking right here and again. And she taught the nurses in the hospital how to use it. So I wanted to uh, create some favor with the nurses, you know, uh, so I'm going to blink after them. You are a great nurse, and they go out to Bowling, you know, because I want them to give me the best care they could. And one would come in and say, You did a fantastic nurse, I'm blinking out. And there was this one nurse that was always rough on me. She had no business being a nurse. She didn't care what she was doing, she just came in and hurt me. She came in, uh, this nurse came in one day and blinked out, You are a great nurse, she walked out. But right behind them, this mean one came in. And she was smiling, saying, you got a message from me? I blinked my eyes one time. Oh, she grabbed the chart and her, uh, her pad of paper and her pen, and I started blinking out, you, the little you, R, the little R, A, and she was smiling, and then I blinked out, B, I, T, C. When I got to see, she threw it in the floor. She went call my sister daddy. He's cutting me out with the with the dog. My sister said, what do you want me to do about it? Well, about, uh, about 10 years later, I was back up in that town, Charlottesville, and me speaking engagement there. I told my wife, I said, let's go by that hospital, University of Virginia. Go to the fifth floor where I was there for six months and see if anybody there that was there when I, I was there. So we went up, here come that nurse. <laughs> she was so late. She looked at me <laughs> and kind of relaxed. And, and she came out and said, You remember me? I said, Oh, yes, ma'am, I really do. <laughs> she, she said, Can I hug you? I said, Yeah. She said, You know, it was the best thing ever happened to me because that showed me. That my heart wasn't in what I was doing, and I, I went back and then to me thinking I'd become a good nurse. I'm saying, well, God bless you, good for you. No, wow, 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 wow! <laughs> in, incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, and one more, look, I, I, I absolutely love your story. I, I love the fact that you've used the power of your thinking to to not only transform your life and, and enable you to live a life that where many 
other people wrote you off, you know, experts, people that were the, the professionals, the doctors, the surgeons, they wrote you off, but you didn't, you kept that vision of yourself. You used the power of visualization to, and, and, and taking things down step by step, breaking down those goals to go on and, and live an incredible life in your story. Um, not just your story, but your, you, you living that has been a, an inspiration, huge inspiration for people for many, many decades. If, if you had a, um, a, a bit of advice that you could go back and tell your younger self, let's say it was your 16 year old Morris and, and you could tell yourself something, what, what would you want to tell yourself? Don't tell people never, never, never give up on that dream. You know, the way I like it, you either got a dream or a nightmare. You know, when we're young, we all have dreams. We want to be an astronaut, president of the United States, a, uh, a, uh, a brain surgeon, whatever. And we run with those dreams when we're little. But then life happens. We get married and we start a family. We go to school. And those dreams begin to fade and put on hold. And the thing is, we need to find that spark that we drive and binds our dreams. They're still there. They're not gone. It's like your grass in the wintertime when you're dormant. Grass is still there and turns brown. And when the rain comes and the spring comes, it comes out again, mm -hmm. refresh again. Well, those dreams are, are still inside you, but you bury them now. Because you're involved in life, you're running business, taking care of family, and your dreams get put on hold. And eventually, if you don't do something and recover and start dreaming again, they'll fade away and they won't come back like that grass. The grass will stay dead, won't be just dormant, be dead. But if you, if you really understand what's going on, and God, you may have given up on yourself, but God's never given up on you. And dream's still there. So in the morning, when I wake up, I, I believe when you wake up, you need to get up. And when you need to get up, you need to perk up. And when you perk up, you need to look up and thank God. And I walk around, I thank God, thank God that my dream's still there and you're bringing it back. You may not see it tomorrow. You may not see it for five years. Doesn't mean it's not there. Then it's timing. And that dream will come to pass. I'll have my ranch. I'll have my jet planes. I'll have my big home. I'll have everything I want. It's there. It's a matter of time. It's coming. You can find the full episodes of the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast here on YouTube, on iTunes, Spotify, and all other major podcast platforms. 